It's the most wonderful gift I've ever had. So they did use general anesthesia that time when they were making my nose, and they put the tapes on me right away in the recovery room afterwards. And the intern who was assigned to me that time came running in the recovery room, and he said, Gary, Gary, watching Dr. Edgerton carve your nose was like watching Michelangelo sculpt a statue. And I'd never thought about that. I thought they just took the rib out and they stuffed it in. I hadn't thought about how they have to carve it a certain way so it looks and functions like a nose. Mine is all rigid, unlike yours. Yours move at the end with cartilage. Mine is now very rigid, so I have to be careful putting sweaters over my head, or I'm always very careful if anyone comes to hug me so my nose doesn't get bumped. But at any rate, these tapes worked so well, I never needed any pain medication. I went home from the hospital in two days instead of ten. And it was just the greatest gift I've ever had, the ability to control my own pain instead of being at the mercy of a shot or a pill every four hours when someone else was ready. So I asked if I could use them in the operating room from then on, and Dr. Edgerton said, well, we'll try it, but we'll have backup anesthesia in case you need it. I never needed it again. I went through eight more surgeries with no anesthesia at all. And you'll see part of that in the video which follows. Another wonderful gift that happened when, before I had a nose and before I had a mouth, I would look at my face in the mirror and I would think, that's not me, I'm pretty, I'm a model, I don't look like that. And there was a wonderful clinical psychologist attached to the University of Virginia Plastic Surgery Department. And she said, Gary, when you look in the mirror, yes, you do have to say it is you, but it's you in transition. And that made such a difference to me because I thought if I'm in transition, it's okay that I look like this now. I don't mind looking like raw hamburger because it's going to change. And we all change all of our lives. We're always in transition. What happened to me was that I lost my outer appearance, my inner values, my job. I couldn't go in my dress shop and scare people. My um, motherhood, I couldn't take care of my children. My, I was going through a divorce at the time. My marriage was over. I lost everything all in an instant. And I learned from that that I cared about my inner values. Instead of looking at the lampshades, I learned to look more at the light bulbs. When we age, we age slowly, and there are gradual changes that you notice in a mirror. Mine were abrupt and immediate. And now, when I have friends say, oh, I'm getting some lines on my forehead, and I look at my chin with the last scars left, I don't mind the road map of where I've been on my face. I'm glad to have it. It's kind of like a badge of courage. And people look at me now and they think, well, you know, she's scarred. She's not perfect. So I can tell her what happened to me because it's okay because she'd understand. So it's kind of like a secret signal on my chin that people know it's okay to talk to me. And I value that. I'm, I'm really very glad to have that. So my tragedy, what could have been a tragedy, truly evolved from the worst to the best event in my life. And I'd like to read you again this quote from Shards, which you all get afterwards. If you realized that the nurtured spiritual part of yourself would accompany you on your eternal journey, and that everything else you've labored so hard to accumulate would vanish the instant you depart this world, would it alter your daily agenda? It's important to think how we would alter our daily agendas. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention, and we'll have time for a few minutes of questions next. Thank you very much.